Hello and welcome to Escape to uh, Studios free tutorials. My name is Mark Spevic and I'm the head of 3D here at Escape. And I'm going to do a free tutorial for you today on um, how to create the dry ice type effect with Maya fluids. Dry ice is um, a effect that you tend to see in studios and quite a lot. Um, we all know it's that heavy smoke that sort of hangs around on the floor. And it has this kind of bubbly nature from its source where it bubbles up and heavier than air and it sinks along the floor and stuff so we're going to try and create that kind of effect using Maya fluids. I'm not going to go into too much depth on some of the settings in Maya fluids on just the major ones to achieve this effect and hopefully drop a few tips along the way. So let's get started and have a look at where we can find the Maya fluids. So here's the interface for Maya and the fluids is actually in the dynamic section so I'm just going to um, switch to the dynamics so we can see that and we have the fluid menus across the top here. Now before I make my fluid what I'd like to do first of all is just make a little container or a cup to put it in. So let's assume we're doing a horror move that you see with uh, Frankenstein or um, Mr. Jack Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. They normally have that cup don't they have bubbling boiling liquid that they drink so let's go for that kind of an effect so I'm going to make a container or a little cup for my dry ice I'm going to start with a polygon cylinder just a very basic model I'm going to do so let me do that again so create a polygon cylinder I'm going to go into the side view here and if I just um, snap the pivot to the base that'll easily allow me to snap the uh, cylinder to the bottom of the grid so it's sitting on the world grid plane, like so. Now I want to turn this into a cup, so I'm just going to duplicate this and scale it outwards a bit to give me the outer wall of my cup. And back in the side view, I'm just going to lift the inner cylinder up a bit, so I've got quite a thick walled container. I'm going to do a simple boolean between these two. So mesh booleans difference, which will give me my cup. Now the nice thing about dry ice is it bubbles up and over and down onto a surface. I'm going to give it a, a ground plane to rest upon. So let's make that a bit bigger. So it should bubble over the cup and down onto this plane. And I'd like it to ideally, let me turn the grid off, go over the edge of this plane and bubble down onto another plane. So actually I'm just going to duplicate that plane, move it down and scale it up even bigger. There we go, let's turn on wireframe unshaded. And of course save because Maya does tend to crash if you don't save, so let's call this dry ice version 1. There we go. I'm going to set my out frames here to something like 300 so I have a lot of frames to see. And we better start making the, now we have the geometry set up, I'm going to start making the uh, fluid container. Now in the fluid menu set here, um, there's two things you can use to make a fluid. A is the container and then B is also the emitter. So if we look in the uh, fluid menu here we can make a container and then we can make an emitter or even we can make a container with an emitter simultaneously. That's the option I'm going to use so I'm just going to click on that and change the settings afterwards. Now if I go into wireframe we can see that we have what's called a container and we have a little emitter in the center. Now the way fluids works is um, we have this fluid container which is where all the fluid sim occurs. It only ever occurs within this box. The reason is um, in order to work out how a volume or a fluid moves through three-dimensional space we have to cut up that three-dimensional space into little boxes. The same way we cut up a two-dimensional space into little boxes, we call them pixels, um, we cut up a three-dimensional space into volume pixels, or in other words we call those voxels. And that's what we can see here on one axis is an idea of these, this grid. Imagine this grid going up in three-dimensional space, cutting this cube into tiny little cubes. Each one of those is a voxel. Now just very briefly how voxels work, and you get that lovely fluidy nature of things swirling and twisting, is the fact that a voxel will fill up with density or your smoke. And once you see that, 
that little box fills up, the smoke has to go somewhere. So what happens is the smoke gets forced out with pressure into neighbouring voxels. Now the thing is, in those neighbouring voxels, there's already pressure and stuff in there. So if stuff is being pushed in, the stuff that's already there is going to get pushed out into the next voxels and so on and so forth, and you get this dynamic simulation occurring. So the voxels are very important and the resolution of your sim is dependent on how much you subdivide this volume into. So at the moment we've not got many divisions so it's not very very high res. Now if I bring up the outliner, the other thing about the way I created the fluids here by using the uh, menu create 3D container with the emitter is um, in the outliner here you'll see we've got the container and if I open that up we'll see parented to it is the emitter. Now, the nice thing about that is you can obviously move the pair, the container and the emitter around the scene together, but I, in this case I don't want to do that. I'd like to actually unparent the emitter here with Shift-P so I can move it independently of the fluid, like so. Now, the emitter I want here is um, a point emitter. If I just press play, you'll see it emanates from just that point. Let's um, turn it to shaded mode so we can see what's going on. In fact, I'm just going to temporarily hide my cylinder so we can see what's happening. And there we go. You can see it's emitting from a point, and it's fairly low res based upon these voxels. Let's make the background a bit darker so we can see a bit easier. Now, first thing you'll notice is um, the emitter is not what I want. I don't really want a point emitter here. I actually want a volume to represent my cylinder. So in the emitter's attributes here, we can scroll down to the volume emitter attribute section. Well, first of all, I have to go up to the basic emitter attributes and tell it not to be omni, but to be volume. And we get a volume shape, a cube. Now if I press play, we're generating the volume from inside that cube rather than a finite point which is fine, but I don't want a cube shape, so if I scroll down to the bottom here I can change the cube into a cylinder. And this is much more like our container, so if I just unhide the container and go into wireframe, I'm just going to line up my emitter a bit better with my container there. So let's just scale it down slightly so it's not as wide as the container. And then the side view, make it a bit shorter in Y. There we go, so it's inside my little cup here. Nice and hidden. Cool. Let's just hide the cup again so I can see the emitter. So let's press play and we'll see we're not getting very much. It's quite low resolution at the minute. Let me just hide the outliner. So the first thing we can do is select the voxel box here and increase the resolution of the voxels. Now it's here called the fluid shape node and this is the container properties. So first thing is, I can see it's not big enough, my fluid, I want it to creep over the edge here and down onto this bigger plane, so already this box isn't big enough. So these are the dimensions of the box. Now a rule, a trick when using fluids, do not scale your box up like this, that's not a good idea. Because um, each voxel is based on scene scale, and if you scale it up, you're affecting the way they move through space. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is increase the size using these settings here. That way, you'll keep to the world space. So let's change this to, say, 25, or even 30 by 30. Or let's do it 25 by 25 for speed, because the problem is the more voxels you have, the slower everything goes. There we go. That'll do. And I'm going to change the base resolution here to something like 8, um, let's go for 60 for now. And you can see I get a lot more voxels and a higher, much higher density of these voxels. So much higher resolution. So I press play now. See exactly that, we get a much finer look at the smoke. But the problem is my smoke is raising upwards. Now before I address that, the other thing I want to do is look at the emitter here. It doesn't appear to be filling the full volume. Well, it doesn't by default, annoyingly, I think. Now if I select the Fluid Emitter tab here and scroll up to this section here, Fluid Attributes, we'll see we've got some settings here. One of them is called Fluid Drop-Off. Now what that does, it falls off the density of the fluid emission from the centre of the emitter to the edge. And that's what we can see here, the drop-off, which is why it appears to happen from the centre, not the whole volume. Now to get the smoke to emit from the whole volume, set your drop-off to zero. 
Now when you press play, you see it just fills the whole volume immediately, which is what I want. 